these rather proper looking gentlemen had a passion. A passion for making the most extraordinary objects out of glass. Leopold Blaschka was born in 1822 and he died in 1895. His son Rudolf was born in 1857 and he lived until 1939. Leopold Blaschka entered the family business of making fancy goods, costume jewelry and the like out of combinations of glass and metal. He had two enormous setbacks in his early life. Firstly, he lost his wife during a cholera epidemic and two years later his father died. He was heartbroken. He sought consolation in the natural world sketching the plants in the countryside around his home. And then he took a trip. He got on a boat to go to North America. On the way, the ship was becalmed. For two weeks, the ship lay motionless, and Leopold whiled away the time, observing the great variety of small invertebrate animals, that's animals without backbones, in the sea around him. He was fascinated by them. He drew them, he marveled at them, and he was struck by the transparency of their bodies that reminded him of the glass that he was used to making. Back from his American trip, Leopold amused himself in his leisure time making glass models of flowers and plants. He had no intention of selling these, they were simply an amusing pastime. They drew attention though, and they came to the attention of a man named Reichenbach, the director of the Natural History Museum in Dresden. Reichenbach had a number of problems. It was all very well to display the mounted skins of gorillas and elephants and similar creatures in lifelike poses, which drew the attention of the visiting public. But when it came to invertebrate creatures, how could he display them? The only method used was to take a real creature and preserve it in a sealed jar of alcohol. The preserved specimens didn't look very beautiful. They tended to lose their color, and having no hard parts, they tended to collapse on the bottom of the jar. Something else was needed, and Reichenbach realized that Leopold Blaschke perhaps held the answer to his problem. He persuaded Leopold to make some models of invertebrate creatures. The models were realistic, they didn't lose their color, they didn't collapse, and Reichenbach, quite rightly, predicted a very bright future for Leopold Blaschke if he would go into the business of making models of invertebrate animals. Leopold did. The business was very successful. He brought his son in as his assistant, and together they made literally thousands of glass models. The scene now shifts. It shifts from Dresden to Harvard University. Harvard in the 1880s was fast becoming the center for teaching and researching science in the United States. The Botanical Museum was entrusted to the professor of botany, George Lincoln Goodale. He was given, in effect, a series of empty rooms and he was invited to create a museum for teaching botany. One of the possibilities was to use dried specimens mounted on sheets of paper carefully labeled. The dried specimens had two drawbacks, however. One is they didn't lose all their color like the invertebrates in alcohol, but they did fade and tended towards a drab, greenish-brown uniformity. The other one was real plants are three-dimensional and pressed specimens are two-dimensional. They were not, therefore, the ideal vehicle for teaching botany. One day, Goodale walked through the Museum of Comparative Zoology. He saw some of the Blaschka models. He was convinced that the Blaschkas held the answer. He went to Germany. He looked the Blaschkas up in Dresden. 
and eventually he persuaded them to make some models for him. They made some trial specimens, they shipped them to the United States, but the specimens were badly damaged in customs. Goodale, however, was not discouraged. He looked at the fragmentary models and realized that they did indeed hold the key to his problem. If the Blaschkas could be persuaded to make a whole series of models, he would be able to populate his botanical museum with lifelike models of the plants of the world. He showed some of his broken models to two people, a Mrs. Ware of Boston and her daughter. The Wares were wealthy, they were deeply interested in botany, and they were entranced by the glass models. And over the years, they became the patrons of the Blaschkers and of the Botanical Museum. They were instrumental in allowing Goodell and his successors as professors of botany to create the unique Ware collection of botanical models at Harvard. Rudolf and Leopold Blaschke, behind their serious appearances, rather prim and proper, there were two very lively imaginations, two visions of what you could do with flameworking that nobody had ever done before, and two extraordinary achievements, models of invertebrate animals and the unique collection of botanical models that is now one of the pride and joys of Harvard University. Thank you.